So welcome to our celebration of the life and the teaching and the legacy of uh, Father John Main, the foundational inspiration for the world community for Christian meditation. And in preparation for the Mass, uh, which we will offer for him and also for all the de many departed members of our community that have, has been formed uh, over the last 40 years, we will listen to some voices from people who today have been touched and are being touched each day by the vitality of his teaching, by the presence of the presence that he discovered in his own heart and in his own life. I met uh, Father John when I was quite young, uh, still a schoolboy, and he made a, a commanding figure, one our respect and affection. But it wasn't until my first year at university that I uh, discovered him at depth as a spiritual teacher. And when he introduced me to meditation in a very simple and uh, brief way. And even at that moment, I knew that what was happening uh, was going to be life changing, but I could say now, some years later, later that it was life changing. Uh, but of course, you, you never really know whether something is going to be life changing until you see your life changed by it. Same with each of us with meditation itself. And what I think struck me most deeply uh, at that moment and throughout my uh, time with, uh, with Father John and helping him uh, with the work that he was doing to share this gift of meditation. What struck me most deeply, I think, was his authenticity and the, the directness with which he communicated, not making it into an obligation, not trying to describe it in a simply, you know, individual way, not trying to sugar the pill, not trying to hide the fact that it, that this is a work, a delightful work, but a work. And all of this came from a, a deep, direct spring. For most of us, when we, when we speak, it gets filtered through many, many filters. But uh, he had this natural luminosity, which I discovered more and more as it also grew stronger over the years, this luminosity of direct experience. And that is his message, really, that we, each of us, each human being, is called to and is capable of this direct experience of the light and open to that we can begin every one of us is called to begin and the great authority of his teaching was just begin and don't be frightened of beginning and don't be over whelmed by what might seem a, a steep, a steep mountain, because there is much more help for you than you need, uh, than you need to worry about. It's always there. And before he died, when I asked him at this, what I should do, because we'd started something and he seemed to be leaving it unfinished. And I was hardly ready to, uh, to continue it. And but I asked him what I should do, and he said very simply, you'll do what you've got to do. And at the time that didn't seem very helpful, but over the years, I realized what an empowering teacher he was. And the very essence of his teaching is that we are empowered, each one of us, 
however weak, however wounded, however lacking in self-confidence, however many mistakes we've made, we are, each of us, empowered and re-empowered continually uh, so that we can really confidently accept the invitation, as he, as he calls it, the invitation into fullness of life. So all of us here in the barn at Bombo and all of, all of you joining from different parts of the world and in different time zones will, I think, share something of that experience as we, as we celebrate his life and teaching today. Uh, a couple of months ago, I was able to visit uh, a parish, Catholic parish in Dublin, now uh, led by the parish priest, Father Jim Caffrey, who has been a meditator for many years. And it seems to me his parish, which he will speak a few words about now, is uh, a living example of how that teaching and luminosity of John Main's transmission uh, has a power to re-empower the Christian community everywhere, the Christian life and Christian worship. So Jim, would you like to share your thoughts now with us? Thank you, thank you Lawrence. And um, it's, it's wonderful to be with you this morning. I'm afraid I'm dying with the flu, so I'm speaking from my bed. Um, <laughs> Ireland is engulfed with the flu, so I hope by next Friday we'll all be better. Um, uh, it's 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 just such an honour to to speak about John Main's legacy. Um, I'm often fascinated when different groups or organisations, when the founder dies or leaves, there's often a crisis, and um, to do this seamless transition um, to yourself, Lawrence, and to the many wisdom teachers in our community. Um, is is definitely a gift, and it's a foundation that that he led, uh, and that he laid. Um, a couple of weeks ago at Benedict's Well, Nick, whom I saw there in the distance at Bonvo there a few moments ago, um, was talking about the influence of the Swami on on John Main, and uh, I, I was very struck by that because what what John Main was doing actually was um, rediscovering, but also redirecting. The tradition of the of Cashin and the fathers, and redefining it uh, in light of what he learned from the Swami, and uh, that day when when Nick gave us the talk, he said, "The true test of meditation is whether we're growing in love, and um, if there's more love in our lives, or more love in 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 the community." Um, I, I suppose John Main would probably have been surprised that there was would be after he went to WCCM, the John Main Seminar, Bonvo. All these things are wonderful developments. And as you mentioned in Bilali, our parish in South Dublin, we're trying to, we're beginning, we're beginning the journey of meditation and service. Um, and I, I think that's a, a real lesson from that John Main learned from the Swami, because the Swami started also as well as meditating he was actually involved in an orphanage. So the two must go together, meditation and service. The, the, the two are, are key aspects. Um, next Friday, um, Lawrence is coming to, to Balali and we're having, please God, a contemplative mass for the feast of the um, Epiphany. And at the end of that mass, um, we're going to dedicate a room in the pastoral centre, which had kind of got lost and uh, was been used for something else, very inappropriate. So we've cleared it out and it's now going to become the uh, John Main um, Meditation and Icon Room. And we'll have icons there and so on, but it'll be dedicated to John Main because we owe him um, so much. And Lawrence will be blessing that um, next, next, next Friday. It'll be a shell. And then one of our community, um, Chinsia, is going to um, uh, design it so that it will be a prayerful place and it will 
really, again, make um, meditation and service the heart of the parish, because at the moment we're kind of reclaiming it for that. And um, uh, that's a new vision. Uh, and it's a challenging vision and we're only beginning. But we're made, we've made a good beginning, I think, in one year. And I had this beautiful experience just before Christmas. Um, I went to the school um, where early on in the year, Noel Keating uh, had done a, a training session with the teachers. And I went into the school for, now they've, we, we, we have them up every Monday for meditation and so on, but we had the whole school together for the Christmas carol service. And it was the first time that we've, um, but I, I haven't been in the parish for, for, I've only been there for a year, but there were no Christmas carol services because of COVID for three years. And uh, so we had half the school, kids, grandparents, and parents everywhere in the hall. And then that group moved out and then another group moved in. So the principal of the school, John Murtha, who's his terrific fella, John said, you, you say something, you know, you, you talk for a few minutes. I, I, I wasn't prepared for it, but um, I said to the children, so we packed hall, let's meditate. And the whole atmosphere, which was euphoric because they were getting their holidays, just changed. And they all got into their position for meditation. The adults did the same. And three minutes each time we meditated. And I said, does anyone know the word uh, that we use for meditation? And they all shouted back, Maranatha. So I think that that's, that was for me really oh, touching. Yeah. It was is... unexpected, not planned, um, unexpected, and um, um, a beautiful gift. And uh, so I think that John Main's um, teaching, John Main's example, continues to find root. And we're truly blessed in you, Lawrence, that you're continuing that tradition at first hand, having known him, and with all our wisdom teachers. And I, I just want to say in conclusion, I feel a little bit like John the Baptist speaking, because what an honour it is to speak just ahead of Maria and Albert. Um, and what a witness they are to our community, that we can see two people in Ukraine meditating and living this very challenging and intense moment. And they were all part of it because of the WCCM. So what a network it is, what a, a network that John Main has created. And I think today is really a day to celebrate that and to give thanks for something extraordinarily special. And I give thanks in my own life for it. And I also give thanks for this parish that I'm in as we begin that journey, slowly but surely in the path of meditation and service. Thank you, Jim, very much. That was wonderful. Uh, we lost you for a, a couple of seconds during your uh, speech, so we feared the worst uh, as you began. You thought, you thought I had died in the middle. Well, that's what you said. You said you were dying. <laughs> and anyway, although we're here to pray for and 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 uh, with uh, John Main today, but, uh, but I think we'll also pray to him for you for a quick recovery. And thank, thank you very you. much for thank you, Lawrence. Speaking and to love us. to love to everybody in the community and love to everybody in Bombo. Thank you. Thanks. And as uh, Jim said, we're now going to uh, speak and listen to, and speak with uh, Maria and Albert Zakharova from Ukraine, from Lviv. Um, they're well known now to our community because their insight into, into the uh, contemplative, spiritual, meditative response to the awful crisis that they and their country are going through has been a teaching, a teaching in itself, um, and a further expansion, really, of the significance of what John Main taught us about meditation as a way of peace. So, Maria and Albert, thank you for joining us, and please share your thoughts with us today.
Uh, thank you for invitation. Uh, glad to see and hear you all. It's a great, a great uh, pleasure for us to be here with you. And we are lucky again today. We have uh, this possibility because, you know, maybe you heard that uh, yesterday we had uh, another big missile strike and uh, uh, electricity went off in all of our city. But now it's already fixed it, so we can participate, we can be here. Uh, so let's say some words uh, for this sharing. Um, the word time became for us a test and a reevaluation of everything we had and what we paid attention to. Very often in times of darkness and painful experiences, people tend to use spiritual beliefs uh, to distance themselves from the experience of the present moment, uh, plunging into escapism and focusing on the emotional side of their sufferings. Uh, and it's understandable, but the pra practice of meditation, along with the support of uh, John Main's uh, simple and clear words, became for us the spiritual support in a completely different sense. Not as a replacement of painful reality for something more pleasant, but rather as a lens that helps us look deeper uh, to meet what reality really is. And th this approach, it changes not reality itself, but ourselves and our vision. Uh, since the beginning of the war, uh, this fragment uh, from the book, uh, The Hunger for Death and Meaning, has come to our attention again and again. When we meditate, we discover a rootedness of being. We learn to stop thinking about ourselves. We allow ourselves to be to be still, to be silent. In a moment of crisis, we uh, can either fall about into the whirlwind of our superficial feelings or try to remain calm and begin to listen. What opportunities does a crisis hide in itself like the death of a sprouting green? Ancient Greek and also Chinese culture uh, say that uh, a state of crisis is a concentrated moment of reality from which we can go either to death or to rebirth. Uh, a similar definition exists in modern medical terminology. Everything uh, depends on whether the, we turn to our own ability to be, to listen, to live fully. At such moments, we can begin to live truly only by stopping to constantly think about ourselves. Uh, because uh, the gospel says, whoever clings to the image or of his or her mental life will lose that life. Practicing meditation in the first month of the missile attacks during the destruction of our cities like Mariupol and the siege of Kyiv was a real crash test of the path that John Main tells us about. We are grateful for his friendly presence with us, embodied in his words and living community. This is a reminder that reality, whatever it is now, is a field for our consciousness. And in this field, the treasure is hidden. Finding and buying this treasure means being attentive, listening deeply, looking beyond the surface. And let us say some words about the practice itself. Практика медитації дуже подібна до посадки насіння. Uh, the very practice of meditation is like planting a seed. І найцінніше для нас у баченні Джона Мейна це поєднання простоти та ясності методу практики. 
What is most valuable to us in John Main's vision is the combination of the simplicity and clarity of the method of practice. І з мудрістю того, як дбайливо вирощувати паростки нової свідомості, які пробуджуються в нас. With the wisdom of how to carefully nurture the sprouts of the new consciousness that is awakening within us. От і Джон каже далі в цитаті, яку ми проводимо. Father John says під час медитації не відбувається нічого, але вона змінює все наше життя. During our meditation, it might appear that nothing happens, but it changes our life. Перевірити, чи діє медитація, може дуже просто. The great test as to whether your meditation is working is... Просто запитайте, чи зростаєте ви у любові? Чи зростаєте в у співчутті до інших? Are you growing in love and compassion? Медитація під час війни е, дуже добре проливає світло на загальну людську взаємопов'язаність. Meditation in times of war shed lights on the universal human interconnectedness. І прагнення, прагнення до якої живе в крихкості кожного з нас. Uh, that lives in the fragility of each of us. Та яку всі ми можемо проявляти у відповідь на людські страждання. And that we can all manifest in response to human sufferings. Одночасно медитуючи, ми починаємо розуміти. At the same time, while meditating, we begin to understand. Що багато речей та явищ, які формально не є медитацією, можуть ставати медитацією за суттю. That many things and phenomena that are not formally meditation can be, that are not uh, meditation in itself, uh, they can become meditation in essence. Наприклад, війна. For example, war, even war. Війна є жахливою, кривавою. Вона виникає через людські ілюзії щодо егоцентризму. War is terrible, uh, blood and arises from human illusions about self-centeredness. Але в той же час вона пробуджує нас, повертає до моменту, каже нам. But at the same time, it awakens us, brings us back to the moment and tells us. Або зараз, або ніколи. Міняйтеся, оновлюйтеся, шукайте в собі найвище, зростайте. It is now or never. Change, renew. Seek the highest in yourself. Grow. І ми помітили найкраще, що зараз, на що зараз можна звернути взагалі увагу. We have noticed the best thing to pay attention to now. Це ті зміни, які відбулися в нашому суспільстві через шок цього болісного повернення до миті тут та зараз. Uh, the changes that have taken place in our society due to the shock of this painful return to the Moment here and now. Люди, які складають зранене тіло країни, почали жити заради взаємної допомоги і почали виживати та перемагати завдяки неї. Uh, the people who make up the country's wounded body have come to live for mutual aid and to survive and win because of it. І зараз Україна стає країною волонтерів. So now Ukraine is becoming a country of volunteers. І також відбувається величезна трансформація релігійної свідомості. Also, a huge transformation of religious consciousness is taking place. Люди, виконуючи своє волонтерське служіння, свідомо входять у потік досвіду, мапою якого є історія Євангелія та інших священних писань. Uh, people performing the volunteer service uh, consciously enter the flower of experience, the map of which is the stories of the gospel and other holy scriptures. Війна, напевно, очищує увагу та допомагає цим людям впізнавати свій власний досвід у внутрішньому досвіді Ісуса, сім'ї Марії та Йосипа, волхвів та пастухів. The war clears the mind and helps these people to recognize their own experience in the inner experience of Jesus, of the family of Mary and Joseph, of three kings, or the shepherds. І сьогодні в Україні з'являється безліч примірників нового сакрального мистецтва. Uh, today many new examples of this new sacred art appear in Ukraine. Uh, 
де наші сучасники, звичайні люди, що переживають жахи війни, зображені у вигляді архетипічних релігійних образів. Where our contemporaries, ordinary people experiencing the horrors of war, are depicted in the form of archetypal religious images. Духовне життя оступово зміщується з суто ритуальної площини, трансформуючись у життя повсякденне. Spiritual life shifts from a pure ritual plane, transforming into everyday life. Тож в цій ситуації наша реалістична мрія сьогодні – це ділитися якомога більше шляхом медитації, про яку розповідає Джон Мейн, яка, як одним з найліпших інструментів прискорення цих добрих змін, які зараз відбуваються в нас. So, our dream today, our realistic dream today, is to share this path of meditation as much as possible, as one of the best tools for accelerating these good changes. Ми дуже вдячні спільноті за ділення цим шляхом. And we are so grateful to all the community for sharing this great path. І за те, що особистість Джона Мейна є другом та підтримкою для нас. And that the person of John Main is uh, our friend and support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Albert, and thank you, Maria. Very, very much from our hearts. I think the whole, the, the, the whole people of Ukraine have become a light for the world because of the way they are fighting for freedom and for justice and their their depth of self-sacrifice and it's it's an inspiration for a world that's so often tired and skeptical and cynical so but within that shining light of ukraine i think the two of you Certainly for our community, uh, are a light within the light. And I thank you for the inspiration and the depth of wisdom that you have learned and, and shared through the ordeal that you're going through. So wonderful that you're here with us and we hope to see you soon again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now we... Uh, We go back, well, we go back to Montreal where John Main died in 1982. And uh, we're going to uh, listen to Magda Jass, who was one of the first oblates of the community. And uh, uh, Fred in the background there, the power behind the throne. And uh, <laughs> nice to see you both. And Magda, Magda and Fred came to the a new community that uh, we were starting in Montreal in the late 70s, uh, very early on, and got it right from the beginning and started, started to, to grow and to contribute and, and, to, and to share the work and life of the community, uh, even as their own family was growing up. So thank you uh, for your friendship over these many years. And Magda will share with us her personal reflection on Father John. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I also want to say a thank you to Albert and Maria that you are partly an inspiration to what I'm talking about because you remind me of my past. Uh, Father John reminded me of my grandfather. Uh, they were both people of enormous authority. They were very disciplined. They were very loving people and looked up to and respected by most people, even for, feared by some people. But because of that, I felt very close to Father John and very accepted and loved. And So as a result of Father John's teaching and the meditation, after his death, I ended up in palliative care, working as a spiritual caregiver. 
as I was doing that, this is not a theory, it is my experience, which I learned, and I learned to pay attention to my experience from Father John. And what I realized, whenever somebody dies, all the people close to them get a gift, an internal gift. So this being the 40th anniversary of Father John's death, I was thinking back, what was the gift that Father John gave me? As, as a child, I lived through the war, war, the Second World War, and people were trying to kill me. And the result of that trauma was that I was a very shy person. And I was a person who was always trying to hide, not to be noticed. And it was very important for me not to be known by anybody. And that was a life and death necessity for me. But with Father John loving me and accepting me and welcoming me, all this changed and I was healed. And one of the ways I noticed how, as an example of how shy I was, when I became an oblate in 1980, during my oblation, at one point I thought the ceremony was over. We were all in the chapel and I had to be on a pre queue in the middle of the chapel and Father John was saying the prayers and I thought it, it was done. So I just ran back to my seat in the chapel because I was uncomfortable being noticed like that in the middle of it. And Father John didn't say a word. He just continued the prayers and the ceremony of my oblation. And this was very typical for him. Father John saw my faults and he saw my weaknesses, but he didn't say anything. He just continued accepting me and lovingly. And he trusted the Holy Spirit and the meditation to do the healing in me and to do the change in me. And so the changes that he transmitted to me were the Benedictine value First of all, the discipline he taught. And I was very indisciplined. Well, I'm still undisciplined except for saying my mantra. So this was something that I really, really needed was discipline. The other why he transmitted to me the gift that I got from him was stability. By his accepting me and welcoming me and being loving and caring, he made me the same in some form. So now people are very comfortable in my presence and people often seek me out. And anywhere I am, some people will come to me and tell me their life story and talk to me. And that's how I ended up doing this kind of service. And then I recognized that indeed I can also serve. And one of the proofs that this happened was in 1991 when WCCM was being formed, the people there elected me to be part of the first advisory committee of WCCM. And so I served in that capacity for a number of years until I felt it was time for somebody else to take my place. <clears throat> so the things I learned from Father John was this discipline, the stability, and the openness to change. And I learned that from him because of the way he lived his life, open to change and open to living out of the infinite possibilities of the Holy Spirit. And so my life has changed in that way, in that I can live 
enjoy and it what lies out of God does. So thank you, Father John, for all the changes. And I want to say that and the, of the many lessons he taught, the one that impressed me a lot and changed things is the one where he tells the story that we have to climb this pole and the vision gets more beautiful and more beautiful. But at one point we have to let go. And we have to let go of everything, including who we are. So this is all about the letting go. And the other story that I always remember is the one where you are in a dark room and one light goes on. And after a while, a light, another light goes on. And then another light goes on. And that is what happens to us. And slowly, each of these lights are changed, brought about by our meditation. And it all serves to make us able to discern others. So. Thank you, Father John. Thank you. Thank you, Magda. Thank you. I think you beautifully uh, evoke Father John's presence and, and his way of teaching, which was not only by words, but more, even more uh, by example, I mean, by seeing seeing the way he deals with, dealt with situations. Um, I remember early on, when I was a novice, the gardener came in in a, a rage about something. Uh, somebody had moved some pots or, and he thought it was Father John. And he was a little unbalanced person. And anyway, he, he threw this sort of tirade of anger at, at at Father John, very discourteously and unfairly, actually. But uh, I, and it, it riled me up to see that, you know. And I, I just saw the way, and I wish I could do that now, but I could just see the way he, he, he listened to, this responded to this rage and pain of this of this person with uh, compassion and it didn't get into him and infect him you know as it, as it, as it would most of us but uh, he just looked patiently and lovingly and you could see after a few moments how his love which is what it was his love began to <laughs> calm the gardener down and uh, it, it, it ended, it didn't end with tears anyway, but it was that inner strength which was mighty strength and uh, that's what you beautifully evoked as well, Magda, so thank you. And he was always like that? Yes, he was always like that, He's, unless he mm -hmm. went into his room and it was not like that, but <laughs> no, he was like that. So um, very happy now to invite Peter, Peter Ng Kok Song from Singapore, an old friend of mine and uh, a major, major part of the community, the founding of the community uh, worldwide. And of course, in Singapore, where he and uh, Patricia, his, his wife, late wife, um, laid the foundations of a very loving and beautiful community there in Asia for the first time. And um, I just say a little word about you, Peter, because uh, to give you an example of how his life touched you, Peter used to, uh, well, still does travel a lot uh, for business. And uh, I think most business people when they travel and they're sitting in a comfortable seat, will uh, put their feet up and relax. And but Peter used his time to listen to John Main's talks and to transcribe them, because he said he wanted to get 
as it were, you know, get the, the teaching into himself by listening and by writing. And that bore fruit in many ways, uh, but also in this beautiful little book, which Marie Ann Albert mentioned, uh, The Hunger for Depth and Meaning, which is a more systematic um, uh, uh, presentation of John Main's teaching by, by themes. So, and Peter is one of the people of whom we can honestly say that Bonveau, would, we would not be here in the barn of Bonveau if it was not for you and your, your kindness and generosity, Peter, and your vision, uh, your sharing of the vision. So please share your, your thoughts with us and introduce the talk by Father John. Thank you, Lawrence, uh, for this opportunity to pay tribute to John Main and to share with our community how, how he affected um, my journey of meditation and indeed my life. I came into the community in 1988 uh, six years after John Main had died in 1982. So I was led to John Main by you, Lawrence. There's a saying that on the spiritual journey, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So I was blessed not only with one teacher, John Main, but by two teachers, the second being you, who was John Main's immediate disciple. After you introduced me to John Main's teaching, I plunged into it like a duck to water. I suppose it was partly the initial fervor of finding something that I had been searching for, for a long time. But it was also driven by necessity. Because uh, as you could remember, uh, Patricia and I, we succumbed to your persuasive powers to start the first meditation group in Singapore in 1988. Imagine forming and leading a new meditation group when we ourselves were beginners. How can you speak with any credibility? What if questions are asked and we were lacking in knowledge and experience? So this was how John Main came to my rescue. I listened to all his talks, then available only on audio cassette tapes. And I studied the transcripts if they were available in his books, or if they were not available, I would transcribe the talks. And this is where I think our community today owes a huge debt of gratitude to the earliest members of our community in Montreal. Because it was the initial members of our community supporting John Main and you that enabled us to continue tapping into the treasury of John Main's teaching. So you yourself recorded most of the talks. Doreen Romandini was also very instrumental in securing the teaching. Mark and Polly Schofield were the ones who took charge of transcribing the talks or making sure that they were properly produced and preserved. 
And of course, they were all supported by other members of the community, like Fred and Magda. So to this day, as I listen to John Main's talks, I remember these earliest members of our Montreal community. And so delighted that Magda could be with us here this evening. John Main gave Patricia and I the confidence and encourage to share our teaching on meditation. Now, why were John Main's talks so impactful for us? I think, first of all, John Main spoke with a humble yet penetrating authority, born from his old experience. When you listen to the talks, you can feel the authenticity of the message emerging from his voice as like an inspiring song being sung to a tune composed by his spirit. So these talks that I listened to were what John Main delivered to meditation groups that met weekly at the Montreal Prairie in the 1970s and early 1980s. The most powerful talks were shortly before his passing in 1982. Typically, there will be three parts to his talks, which preceded the meditation period. The first part was basically why we should meditate. What should be our motivation to meditate? He was so eloquent when he talks about setting our minds on the kingdom, focusing on what is real and unchanging, what is eternal. He spoke about resonance and harmony with the creator and all of creation. He spoke about enlightenment, self-realization, death and resurrection, leaving behind our limitations and realizing our potential. In the second part of his talk, John Main then pivots from the profundity of why we should meditate to the radical simplicity of how to meditate. In every talk, he will repeat the three basic elements of the practice. First, the necessary discipline of sitting still. Second, the unceasing focus and repetition of the mantra. And thirdly, the lifelong commitment to meditating at least twice a day for between 20 to 30 minutes. And then in the third part, John Main would often conclude his talk with words of encouragement to the meditation group members to start the journey and to persevere. We are to understand the journey of meditation as a pilgrimage to the temple of our heart. He would describe it so beautifully as a way of love, indeed a work of love. 
because it is about reciprocating the generosity of God in Christ. And this reciprocity of love involves us in a daily, steady commitment to the practice and during the time of meditation, an unceasing attention to the mantra. So today on John Main's 40th anniversary, I encourage all of you, wherever you are on the journey, whether you're a beginner or whether you're a long timer, to devote time to imbibe the teaching of John Main. You will benefit as I did from him as your guide and companion on, your, on our journey to God. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. Thank you, Peter, very much. And thank you for being open as you have been from the beginning to that teaching, that, which is such an extraordinary, luminous and pure message from the depth of one person's experience and for, for you for absorbing it and sharing it and having the insight and the, and the practical wisdom to help uh, shape the community over, over these many years. So thank you. And we, we, you, you've chosen uh, one of uh, John Main's talks I think for us to listen to now and yes. I thought I thought just immediately after that because in all of these talks that he gave um, they were quite short talks I think this is just 10 minutes they were quite short and then it would be followed by immediately by a time of meditation so his talks were not abstract and just you know ideas they were designed actually internally designed to prepare us for a time of meditation so let's uh, practice that imagine that we were we're sitting here in a a room uh, and uh, we'll be listening to him he comes into the room uh, he's carrying his actually it might well have been this book the new testament which i was using today uh, and then he would give his talk, welcome people, uh, give a talk. And then you would notice that as the talk approaches its end, it is opening up into the silence. So we can uh, get a feel for that uh, now as we um, will we'll do our meditation for the mass, we'll do it now. And uh, so, Peter, would you just like to introduce the, the, the talk? Or... Yes. Yeah. I think you're mute. You're mute, I think. You're mute. That's it. That's it. I've chosen for our gathering today this talk, which is taken from Father John's book, Moment of Christ. And the title is the temple of your heart. The temple of your heart. What I want to try to put before you this evening is the conviction of the early church of the reality of the presence of Jesus within us. And it's the reality of the presence of his spirit and the real wonder of the Christian life is that each one of us is called to live out of this reality to live out of an eternal part 
of our own being. The two great Christian words are meditation and contemplation. Meditation is remaining in the center, being rooted in the center of your own being. And contemplation is being in the temple with him, contemplare, to be within the temple with him. And the temple is your own heart. And the essence of being with him in the vision of the early church is an absolute oneness. And this is what we've got to try to proclaim to the world. That it is our destiny to be divinized. To be one with the Spirit of God. And that divinization is something that is utterly beyond our imagination. Utterly beyond our own power of understanding to comprehend. But in here is the mystery that St. Paul speaks of. It is not beyond our capacity to experience it in love. And it's our capacity to love and to be rooted in love that is the essence of our own divinization. Listen to St. Paul when he speaks about the reality of this, the presentness of it. For he it was, he's speaking of Jesus, who brought us salvation. Salvation is deliverance from all our own limitations. Salvation is the Jewish word for deliverance from bondage, from slavery, into the wonderful liberty of the children of God. It is he who brought us salvation and called us to a dedicated life, not for any merit of ours, but for his own purpose and his own grace, which was granted to us in Christ Jesus from all eternity, but has now at length been brought fully into view by the power of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For he has broken the power of death and brought life and immortality to light through the Gospel. And the Gospel is just that good news of our deliverance from slavery. And if we wanted to put that into terminology for our own time, it's a deliverance from our own egoism, from everything in us that isolates us, from everything in us that limits us into the limitless love of God. Now it's the reality of this that we must be open to in our prayer presentness of it, that this Spirit of Christ and this gift of Christ, the gift of His Spirit, is the very basis of all reality. And the art of living, the art of all human living, is not to live at the surface not to live at the level of trivia, but to live out of what Jesus called that spring of eternal life welling up within us. Listen to St. Paul again. I want you to, to continue in good heart and to come to the unity of love, to the full wealth of conviction, 
which understanding brings. And I want you to grasp God's secret. And that secret is Christ himself. In him lie hidden all God's treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And listen to this. For it's in Christ that the complete being of the Godhead dwells embodied. And in him you have been brought to completion. And that is why in our prayer, as we meditate as faithfully as we can every morning and every evening, we must go beyond all imagination. We must go beyond all thought, even holy thought and holy imagination. And we must be utterly still and utterly reverent in the presence of the mystery of God. Because it's out of that mystery that we are invited to live, be rooted in Him, be built in Him, be consolidated in the faith you were taught, and let your hearts overflow with thankfulness. Now let's be clear that wonderful as this message is, intoxicating though it is, we must approach it with simplicity and with humility. And that's why we must learn to say our word and to say it with ever greater faithfulness and to say it every morning and every evening without expectation, without thinking that we're going to put pressure on God, that we're going to twist his arm to have him reveal himself to us in some way. We're simply doing the only thing we can do if we want to live our lives to the full and live them out of the infinite depth that they possess, the infinite potentiality they possess. We live them in union with Christ. And that's the real wonder of meditation. That we do lose ourselves. That we are in the temple with Him. And it's in that loss of self we find ourselves in Christ and in him infinitely expanded in heart and love.
Spirit be with you all. Let's ask God's mercy upon us who celebrate Father John's life and teaching and upon the world. Gracious and loving God, open our hearts in wonder and gratitude for the gift that you planted in the life of John Maine and for the fruit that it has borne. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Victoria will read the first reading for us. Brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all of these, put on love, that is the bond 
of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were called also in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today the church celebrates the feast of the Holy Family. As we listen to these words of St. Paul and reflect on the community that meditation has brought into being, that spiritual family, we can perhaps see deeper meanings of the holy family of humanity. Let's sing together the refrain. <clears throat> Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Your spouse shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home your children like olive plants around your table blessed are those who fear the lord and walk in his ways behold thus is the one blessed who fears the lord the lord bless you from zion May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Let the 
peace of Christ control your hearts. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. The reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. I have told you all this so that when the time comes for it to happen, you may remember. I did not tell you this at first, because then I was with you. But now I am going away to the one who sent me. None of you asks me where you're going. Yet you are plunged into grief because of what I have told you. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is for your good that I am leaving you. If I do not go, your advocate will not come. Whereas if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will confute the world and show where wrong and right and judgment lie. He will convince them that right is on my side by showing that I go to the Father when I pass from your sight. There is still much that I could say to you, but the burden would be too great for you now. However, when he comes, who is the spirit of truth, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but will tell only what he hears, and he will make known to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me, for everything that he makes known to you, he will draw from what is mine. All that the Father has is mine. And that is why I said, everything that he makes known to you, you will draw from what is mine. A little while and you see me no more. Again, a little while and you will see me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. It's difficult for all of us to let go, uh, to lose what is precious to us, especially if we can see it and grasp it. That's what the disciples felt clearly at that moment as they were being told to let go of Jesus. And in every situation in our life where there is deep meaning, deep love, deep truth, it is hard to let go. John Main taught me 
the importance and the necessity for that letting go. Doesn't mean it's any easier, but it's a great gift to have been shown that that is the way, the truth and the life to, to accept that. And as I think we've heard in the uh, wonderful comments and testimonies uh, in the first part of this, this service, when people spoke about the influence of John Main and the meditation he transmitted on their lives, we can glimpse that John Main was one of those few great souls who teach this directly. And that was certainly the truth for me, uh, as I learnt and as he trained me and as he showed me as much by his own example as by his words within the last months of his life uh, he died at the age of 56 with his major work in life just beginning it was hard but what i could see and feel in the way that he when it was clear that he was going to die he accepted it and as it were spun it around so rather than being a, a tragedy which of course death is a tragedy and the loss of someone you love is a tragedy but he was able to spin this or he seemed to me to spin this tragedy around so that it became it's difficult to put into words but an energizing and a necessity and that's why those words of jesus struck me when i read them this morning it is necessary for you that i go and the meaning of that is much deeper than we can articulate but something in us might resonate with the wisdom of it so that the spirit the advocate would come be able to come in that sacrifice because when you accept something difficult unwelcome you by the accepting of it you make it a sacrifice and that sacrifice becomes paradoxically life-giving so what you lose is what you find and that simple wonderful truth is at the heart of our meditation that's exactly what we are doing as we learn slowly humanly humbly how to meditate and it was why he was able to speak with such confidence about the importance of meditation and I know I, I never felt this myself, but I, I can see, you know, sometimes people say, oh, well, meditation, meditation, meditation. Is it the answer to everything? Well, yes and no. It doesn't solve all your problems. But it will transform the way you accept your problems. So it is the answer an answer, a way, a direct way to accept and therefore to transform 
and to do that in the deepest part of ourselves. And therefore, if we do it in the deepest part of ourselves, every aspect of our life is eventually touched and transformed by the same work, the same transformation. So we can celebrate the life of John Main as the life of one of those few people in whom the teaching became embodied so fully that in his acceptance, in his life and death, a seed was planted. and needed to be planted in that way. And that seed has grown and in a community that is just putting out small branches. It's not a big institution, God knows, but as we heard just a little glimpse of the various ways in which that seed of John Main's life teaching and his sacrifice of love uh, is bearing fruit in a parish in Dublin, in war-torn Ukraine, uh, in the lives of those who knew him and in all parts of the world. So that's, I think, why we're, uh, what we're celebrating today, how that seed of new life, the seed of the divine life is released into the world at the right time to bring the healing necessary and to give us hope even in the worst of times that that seed of life is immortal, is continually renewing itself. And we'll read uh, the intercessions as we prepare for the offertory. <clears throat> Intercession for today, the feast of the Holy Family and the anniversary of Father John. Today's feast of the Holy Family reminds us that like Joseph, we have to pay attention to what God asks of us and sometimes to take risks trusting in God's plan. We pray and thank God today for Father John, a man of prayer who listened in silence, who trusted and whose life's work rekindled the practice of Christian meditation, which has impacted and transformed many lives. We give thanks for the gift of meditation. We pray for the world community of Christian meditation, which Father John founded 
for our director, Father Lawrence, for members of the guiding board, the trustees, national coordinators, members of committees and group leaders. We recognize with gratitude the generosity with which they serve the community with their many gifts and talents. We pray for all involved in the new WCCM Academy, in the teacher leader and senior teacher programs as they promote and sustain the practice of meditation. We pray for wisdom and guidance in all they do. We pray for all our friends in the contemplative movement and for our worldwide community of meditators. We pray especially for those who are in difficult situations in Ukraine, Hong Kong and China. May God give them strength and courage. We pray for all the members of our community who have passed away in the past year. We pray for all who asked our prayers in today's chat and for those in our Bonvo book of prayer, especially for Marina Vial, Elizabeth Pelsez and Britta of France and Nancy Edwards of the United States. We pray in silence for our personal intentions. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of your Son, bringing peace and hope to our troubled world, and for the gift of meditation, which makes us more aware of your presence. Hear our prayer and grant what we ask in the name of Jesus, your Son, the Prince of Peace, our Saviour, and our Lord. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, let us pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of the penance for the grace and the glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Lord, we offer this sacrifice of healing and of reconciliation. 
We humbly ask that through the intercession of the Holy Family to which Jesus belonged, you may establish all our families throughout the world and the human family itself in grace and in your peace. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just our duty and our salvation that we should always and everywhere give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through him the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth today in splendour, and our frailty is assumed by your living word. Not only does human mortality receive unending honour, but by this wondrous union we too are made eternal. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sin may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love, together with Francis, our Pope, and Pascal, our Bishop, and all those who serve your people. We pray especially for the world community on this day, that it may continue to grow in generosity and wisdom. We pray for all the members of our community who have died this past year and whose names will show on the screen at the end of the Mass. And for all those in the last 40 years who have, who have died and left their gift of self in the work and life of the community. We pray for all those who have died. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, Saint Benedict, Saint John, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. And now each in our mother tongue, let us pray in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. This is Jesus, the bread of life, and the Lamb of God, who has sent us the Holy Spirit. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life.
I will send you the Holy Spirit to teach you. Let us pray. Let's give thanks for this time of worship and reflection together in gratitude for the life and teaching in the spirit of John Main, let us pray that we too may become teachers, 
each one of us in the way that we are called to do and speak the truth as he did from our hearts. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. So let's ask God's blessing uh, on our community around the world and upon our brothers and sisters in other faiths who are also sharing this necessary gift of meditation for our time and for our brothers and sisters in, in other Christian contemplative movements and networks like Contemplative Outreach and Center for Action and Contemplation uh, with whom we share uh, in different ways, but essentially the same spirit to bring this gift of the wisdom of the heart and the unity of the heart into our world. So may the blessing of Almighty God come upon us and remain with us in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And thank you for being with us on this special day here in Bombo. <clears throat>